Who is our greatest enemy? Our greatest enemy is shaitan. Another dua that we learn in the Quran, وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ هَمَزَاتِ الشَّيَاطِينَ وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ رَبِّ أَنْ يَحْضُرُونَ Oh Allah, I seek refuge from the strokes of shaitan. And I seek refuge that he even comes close to us. Allah told us, إِنَّ الشَّيَطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ فَاتَّخِذُهُ عَدُوًا that shaitan, the devil, is your enemy, so take him as your enemy. And when someone is our enemy, we have to know our enemy. How do we protect ourselves from shaitan? Well, we have to know his plots and we have to know how he plans. One of the things that shaitan does is he comes to us little by little. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tattabi'u khutuwati shaytan. Oh, you who believe, don't follow the footsteps of shaytan. He didn't say don't follow shaytan. He said the footsteps of shaytan because shaytan comes little by little. Shaytan is not going to make us abandon our prayer overnight. But what he's going to do is come to us slowly and slowly. He'll say, you know what? You pray five times a day. You don't have to get up for Fajr. Just pray it when you get up. You're not missing it technically, you know? And it's okay even if you, if you miss it, you're always praying Fajr, right? You'll say, you're really busy. You got that big meeting coming up at Jummah. You always pray Jummah. It's not gonna matter if you just miss it this one time. And we may start to take the bait and believe this so that over a period of time, maybe now we're inconsistent in the prayers. If you look at the language which is spoken in any culture, go back 20, 30 years, Words that were said, phrases that were used, which were incredibly offensive and harsh and derogatory and demeaning, now are the norm. Things we couldn't imagine. It's not like those words all of a sudden are not bad anymore, or those phrases are, are not bad anymore. They still are. They've just become normalized. How did shaitan do that? Step by step by step. So when we're watching something or listening to something, or partaking in an activity, we have to ask ourselves, are we compromising a little bit now because that's all going to add up slowly, slowly, slowly and lead to something greater. This is a strategy of shaitan. The other thing shaitan does is he makes the ugly look beautiful. There are those who their, their actions have been made to seem beautiful and they don't even see the evil in their actions. Let's take two simple examples, alcohol and gambling. Allah told us and, and, and clearly about both of these. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu innama al-khamru wal-maysur wal-ansabu rijisum min amani shaytan. Or you who believe wine and gambling and this pagan practice, ansab, they are filth from shaytan. Now, when we look at alcohol, if you ask the average person, be honest, what do you think of when you think of alcohol? They're not going to tell you about the misery that it causes. Now, I work in drug addiction. I can tell you the misery it causes. You can look at the stats. You can see the broken families, lost uh, dreams, and everything that it causes. That's not what shaitan does. He makes it look beautiful. Ask the average person, young person, older person, what do you think of when you think of alcohol? They will say, fun. I think of people hanging out on a beach. I think of beautiful people. I think of being very successful, pouring expensive wine. How is shaitan able to do that? Because he's making it look beautiful. When you think of gambling, a gambling machine, it attracts you to it. It's beeping, it's buzzing, it's got nice designs. It looks almost like a video game. People are attracted to it. You don't see behind all of that, that gambling disorder is a diagnosis in the manual of mental disorders. You don't see that because shaitan made it look beautiful. And so this is a great way to explain these concepts to other Muslims, to those who are asking questions, that shaitan, look how he's making, look behind, look beyond the surface to see what is actually happening here. And look what shaitan is doing to make these ugly things look beautiful. So shaitan is patient. Shaitan is not impatient. As long as he gets his way, he will continue to plot and he will continue to plan and he will continue to come little by little. So how do we protect ourselves from shaitan? We know about his plotting 
and his planning. Also, we seek refuge from shaitan and reading Surah Al-Baqarah because the Prophet Sallallahu told us that shaitan flees from a house where Surah Al-Baqarah is read. Maybe there's six people in your household. Maybe there's two, maybe there's one. Whatever the case may be, yes, it's a long surah. And maybe you say, well, I'm a little slow at reading it. Well, the speed comes by reading it. And the, the time that it takes to read it, the benefits are so much. Imagine a house safe from shaitan. Imagine what we will not be listening or seeing. Imagine how beautiful the interaction will be in a house which is safe from shaitan. And so this is why we seek refuge from shaitan and we do what we can to combat our enemy and know our enemy.